Okay. Um, well, before we get into what spiritual self-defense is and uh, uh, kind of how it works, uh, what I want to do is talk for a minute about who it's for. And this is a really important question. And the reason that it's important is, uh, I don't know, I remember when I first came to Jesus, I just wanted to tell everybody about Jesus. And I couldn't understand why everybody didn't want Jesus. It just didn't make any sense to me. And the same thing when I first came into an understanding of spiritual self-defense. It's like going around trying to tell everybody this wonderful thing. And I just kind of got this kind of response. You know, it's like people didn't seem to care. And uh, uh, if I started to push, they started to push back. And it took a while for me to figure out why. I think one of the big reasons is because it takes a quality that not everybody possesses. It takes courage. And I don't know about you, but I squirm a little bit when I hear that word. Because uh, my life was a life of fear. I was bullied at school. Uh, I didn't have it very good at home. It seemed like when I was growing up, there were no safe places. And um, uh, I was afraid. I was scared. But I want to let you in on a dirty little secret. If you dig deep enough, all of us are scared. And courage is not the absence of fear, but courage is moving forward despite our fears. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the types of courage that it takes to do spiritual self-defense. The first type of courage is what I call the courage to pioneer. Pioneer, when you don't need approval to figure out where you're going. Spiritual self-defense is going to take you places where you've probably never been before. And I cannot guarantee that your friends are going to go with you. This is something that you may have to do on your own. And you have to have the courage to be first, if need be. And so how do you know if you have this kind of courage? Well, you have this kind of courage if you're the kind of person who takes the time to figure out what's really important and you don't look around to see if everybody else is doing something before you decide if it's right for you. You don't need somebody else's approval. You don't need somebody else's permission to decide what's right for you. To practice self-defense, you need another kind of courage, and that is the courage of honesty. And I think that this is a reason why it took me so many years to get to the place where I was even able to look at this. Because uh, it's a hard one. It's hard, it was hard for me to admit that maybe I just don't have it all together inside sometimes. It's hard for me to admit that I had spiritual bullies in my life that were bigger than I am, bigger than my ability to grapple with. And, um, you know, some people don't see this kind of honesty as a sign of strength. They see it as a sign of weakness. Um, but I see it as a sign of strength. You know, many people have Jesus, but the Jesus that they have just doesn't seem to work in the real world where they live in the world of porn or anxiety or stress or addiction or whatever, the Jesus they have just isn't keeping up. And there's got to be a reason why. And let me suggest that a big part of that reason is uh, 
you only get uh, you only see real change in your life when the real you meets the real Jesus and if we don't have the courage to look inside at the real me then we don't see then the real me can't meet the real Jesus there's a third kind of courage and that is the courage of faith and I guess I would put it this way. Do we have the courage to believe or to at least hope that shame and blame is a poor substitute for the gospel? Do we have the courage to believe that our suffering is not a report card on our performance? Do we have the courage to believe that God doesn't wait for us to dress up before he shows up? And do we have the courage to believe that maybe there's something better out there than try-hard religion? I don't know about you, but I just can't get it out of my head that because Jesus lives inside me and lives inside you, that we carry around a whole lot more power and potential than we've ever imagined. The final kind of courage that it takes is what I call the courage to see things through a different set of eyes. This is a courage to let God take us out of our mental straitjacket. The courage to let God be God. Uh, a word we could use for this is paradigm shift. What's paradigm shift? It's seeing things differently. I've told this story to some of you before, but uh, back in 1970, my parents bought some new dining room furniture. And it was typical late 60s, early 70s stuff, metal frame, vinyl, padding, and it had some gaudy design that somehow in 1970 we thought looked good. <laughs> anyway, I was 13 years old, and I don't care too much about dining room furniture, and I looked at these chairs and I saw flowers on them. And I saw flowers for probably two years, and then one day I was looking at this design on these chairs, and I realized, those aren't flowers. Those are cows. <laughs> and after that, I could never see flowers. When I looked at those chairs, I could only see cows. Well, paradigm shift in our lives takes place when God does a work inside us and suddenly everything looks different. We just can't see our world the same anymore. There's lots of stories about this, and I've had lots of experiences like this in my own life, but one of my favorite stories is from Luke 24 in the Bible. We have these two guys, their Messiah, their teacher, um, that held so much promise and looked like he was the one that was going to set everything right that was wrong, got nailed to a cross, murdered, and died. And it's like their whole world caved in. And they just didn't, know, didn't even know where to pick up the pieces. I mean, their life, nothing in their life made sense anymore. And so they're walking down the road, and some guy starts walking with them. And uh, they're just pouring out their hearts to this guy of how terrible their life has become. And he starts talking to them. And they stop to eat together, and they look up, and look into his eyes and realize this is Jesus. This is the one that we thought was dead. And they realize they have this complete paradigm shift that uh, death is too small of a thing to stop Jesus from doing what he does. And after that, everything is changed. Um, I've had paradigm shifts as well in my life, and after they've taken place, everything has changed. Uh, I've walked away feeling a thousand pounds lighter. 
the colors outside are brighter. It's like the whole world is different. And I believe that can happen for all of us. I believe it can happen for you.